You've reached Conversation with Mr. A. This is your host, Anthony Apostilla. Thank you for listening. Let's get right to the episode. Welcome to another edition of Conversations with Mr. A. This is your host, Anthony Avistilla. So right here I am with Mr. Joe Grasso. Govasso. Govasso. I'm, my apologies. Um, who's been in the military for a number of period of years. 21. Thank you, Joe, for your service. Thank, thank you for thanking me and, you, and you're welcome. <laughs> so, okay, uh, which branch of the military were you uh, in and for how long? Okay, I was in the U.S. Navy, specifically in the submarine service, and I was I retired from the Navy after 21 years, and I never I never was associated with any other group except the submarine service during my whole career. How was the experience in the submarines? Uh, some of the uh, rewards and some of the challenges. Boy, <laughs> you know, you're talking to a to an old guy here, and. Uh, I, I stayed in for 21 years, but it's been over 40 years now that I haven't been in the service. And you're asking me to talk about it, but like one third of my life were. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the the thing, the thing that, that the you asked for, you know, what I enjoyed, and I like to kid and say I enjoyed every day of my life <laughs> in the service. And one thing the service did for me. It, I, I went in as a 18-year-old, pretty naive. I came from a small town back in New England, and I was not very sophisticated, let's say. I was educated. I did graduate from high school. <clears throat> and uh, my father passed away when I was 11, before I was 11. And I never had a real father figure in my life after that. And I went into the Navy, and I think... It, it made me a man. I mean, it, it showed me, I was shown how to be a man, how to do things, you know, in a manly way and and all that. Uh, so anyway, that, that was the best, that was a good part of the Navy is learning, learning that kind of stuff, learning how to associate with other people, learning to, uh, you know, act manly, that kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, we... Um, you asked, uh, my, my career, as far as that was concerned, I went to electronics school, uh, first off, and that, and at that time, electronics school was almost a year, so I spent my first year in the Navy, while well, my first year in six weeks, uh, boot camp, then school, and then I came out of school and went to another school, submarine school. And then from submarine school, I went aboard a submarine. And the submarine happened to be the USS Nautilus, which was the first submarine to go under the ice under the North Pole. And I got aboard that ship. As soon as it came out from under the ice and came back to the United States, I was one of the first sailors to report aboard because, (laughs) well, anyway, there's a story there. I'm not going to tell it. Anyway, I was one of the first sailors to jump aboard as a new sailor on that when it pulled into New York City. So, uh, and my life in, on a Nautilus was exciting because it was at a time when the Nautilus crew was was being honored for going under the ice, and I I didn't go under the ice, but nobody knew that because I wore the patch that said USS Nautilus on my uniform. And people said, oh, we love you, <laughs> you know, and that kind of thing. <laughs> so so uh, it was kind of borrowed on, or, or, but I was enjoying it. Uh, to go back a little bit, uh, the boot camp experience. Sure. How was the boot camp experience like back then? Well, um, how was it like? You know, <clears throat> I, 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 it's, a, it's kind of a, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't real difficult. For some people, it was. For some of the people in our in our company, we had we were broken up into hundred hundred men companies, and uh, some of the men in our company, men boys, 
in our company uh, did not have a good experience. And uh, my experience was, first off, I was I was a platoon leader. There were two platoons, so each each platoon was fifty men, and uh, I was the leader of second platoon. <clears throat> and uh, that was an experience, you know, where I came from. I <laughs> I don't know if I was a leader or not in high school, but uh, here I was in in charge of fifty men. Okay. And uh, I enjoyed it. I, you know, I really, uh, the people, the men would come up to me and give me their problems, you know, with whatever they were doing or whatever we were doing as a group. And they would suggest different ways to do it, you know, that kind of thing. And I would have to make a decision as to whether to accommodate them or follow my own, what I knew had to be done, what I was being told to be had to be done. Well, not, not as far as that, but anyway, I had to deal with the people in the, in the, uh, and their ideas and their, their way of, they came from different backgrounds than I did and all that. Was it hard to rein them in uh, at times? No, no, not really because we were military. So, you know, usually the, whatever the, whatever the big guy says, you do. It was the right way. There's the wrong way to, to do a job. We learned that quickly. And, in uh, boot camp was there's the right way to do a job, there's the wrong way to do a job, and then there's a Navy way to do a job. <laughs> and then we always did it the Navy way. And it was it was different than what people were used to doing. And so they would voice their concerns and that kind of thing. So, so you didn't come across like any tough personalities or people uh, who try to try to go against the Navy way? They, they were, they were, they didn't last. Didn't last, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we had, we, that's what I was talking about. We had some people that were criminals, basically. And uh, they they didn't graduate with us. They, didn't. they were washed out. That's what boot camp's all about. Okay? Boot camp is to who's going to conform, who's not going to conform, and the nonconformists don't get a pay anymore, not from the Navy. So. Sure. Now, uh, I'd imagine over the years that you're there, uh, I'm assuming built a family. I was going to ask, what were some of the challenges between balancing family life and military life that you encountered? Okay. Um, at the time, well, by the time I graduated all these schools and everything, and then I got back to sea, uh, well, I was a, on a Nautilus at sea, but um, I started dating my wife-to-be while I was on a Nautilus. And I spent many a lonely night in a phone booth <laughs> talking to my wife, who was you know, in the next state, basically. Um, and then uh, we got married. And our first couple of years, I, th- I think they were blissful. I think, they, it, you know, we had our, we had problems, but we, we you know, we got together on them. We, we both knew that the problems would go away in our life. And uh, so anyway, um I got on, a, got on an FBM submarine. Now, an FBM submarine has got two crews, and ha, ha, well, the two, blue and gold. So the blue crew goes on board the submarine for, what is it, three months? And the gold crew, you go to schools, you go, you, you stay ashore. Okay, then the three-month transition, you go, you go out to sea, and the blue crew stays home. And the word was, you know, the, the mantra was that whether you were happily married or whether you were unhappily married, you were happy half the time. Well, what I found out was when I was away, I was unhappy because I wasn't home. Now, after three months being alone, I'd come home and then I'd be ready to go back to sea very quickly, <laughs> you know, because, because well, and, and uh, Irene, my wife, also, she she would take over all the family function while I was gone. So I'd come back and she'd say, "Here, here's the stuff I was taking care of. You know, all the banking, all the all the things that men do in a family, including discipline and the kids." Well, I could turn to that <laughs> very quickly. So what that ended up being, I did not go to on very many patrols on a nuclear submarine. So I went back to shore duty, 
and we were both happy at that because we lived on base and I only, I, we lived on base and I walked to work every afternoon, you know, every morning. And uh, if she was having some kind of a problem at home, I would walk from the, you know, walk from the gates of, of the industrial area back home and say, okay, well, let's take care of this. And then I'd go back to work and work extra hours afterwards, whatever. Was it hard for the kids uh, when you came back? So, I mean, you were, you were gone You were gone for a period of time. Right. Then you came back. And, of course, you mentioned taking care of the duties, the family duties. Uh, seeing the kids, was it kind of tough to kind of adjust with the kids as well? Uh, my daughter and I are still working out our relationship <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> from them days. Uh, she's 60 years old. <laughs> And uh, I, I think she was pretty upset that her daddy would leave, you know, for them periods of time. And she knew the effect it had on mom. And so, it was, and she was, you know, three to five years old at that time. Uh, so anyway, uh, I say we're still working that out. But of my three kids, she is the one that I have the the biggest to dos about. You know, we. We get to draw and eat each other, and sometimes we get to beyond, go beyond what's what we should. She does, I do, I do more than she does, but you know. And uh, so our relationship now is getting a lot better than what it used to be in a, twenty years ago. Let's say that's good. Yeah, but uh, the kids were young. Uh, when I got off the submarines, my older older son, oldest son was, I think he was in the second grade. So the kids were. We're not that old. Um, and the boys adjusted pretty well. But uh, my daughter was, I think she was a revent, resentful of I, what I did. I'm not sure. But that's, what I, that's what my thoughts are. When you uh, finished the uh, military, was it hard to adjust? Just uh, adjust to civilian life? Like, oh, wait a minute. I don't have to do this, this, and this anymore. <laughs> I spent... Probably the last five years of my Navy career. I, I spent the last two years of my Navy career here in Bremerton at the shipyard. So basically, I was a shipyard worker. Okay. Well, above that. But anyway, I was basically a shipyard worker. I, when the horn, when the whistle blew, I used to know well, that's the end of the day. And when the whistle blew in the morning, start work, you know, that kind of thing. So it was pretty domestic. It wasn't military as, as far as that was concerned. I didn't have any people under me as a in the shipyard that I had to worry about their problems. I was just I went to work and I came home, you know that kind of thing. For uh, uh, the listeners who may not be familiar with the shipyard, it's here in uh, Kitsap County. Mm -hmm. uh, can you briefly describe how the shipyard is like? Just <laughs> just a quick synopsis for people who may not be familiar. Well, I'm, I'm familiar with it. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the shipyard, what it's like. It's like a whole bunch of people that work at their jobs and do the best job they can do, and you run into the occasional person that would rather do something else or, or slack, what we call slacking off. You know, they, they won't do their job. They, they would rather goof off, you know. But, again, they don't last very long. But, anyway, uh, most of the people I was associated with were – very industrious, knew their jobs well. Um, I was a super a superintendent, is what I was. And uh, when I asked them to do something, you know, it, it, it was never out of the ordinary. It was just, you know, job related. Uh, whenever it was something that I had to have, a, was on the schedule, had to be done by the schedule date because of whatever the reason. And more, more or less, they always turned to and said, okay, we'll support you, and away they go. Um, it was, the, the people on a shipyard are, they know their jobs. They know their jobs well. Um, a lot of times, schedules slip, and they say, oh, they're incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. No, no, it's not that at all, because I was, I was the person that was superintending them, and I know it was because of some change that the Navy said, okay, we're going to have this done. And wait a minute, that wasn't in the original contract. So, you know, that, that causes a, a delay. Uh, uh, so, so what I'm saying is, is it, 
to me, it was just another community and, and a close-knit community. And uh, the people had all different jobs. There were electricians. There were people that, uh, you know, put up the, you see the big tents around them, around the ships nowadays. Mm -hmm. Well, there were people that put those tents up, you know, and they're pretty skilled at that. And they, there's, there's a lot of innovation going on in there. And uh, so, again, they're skilled. Even the crane drivers, the people who, they sit up there in a the crane, and you're looking at one person way up there in a the crane, about, you know, 40, 50 feet off the ground, and they look down at you, and you think, oh, what a slacker that guy might be. But, no, they are, they're, they're, they are very competent, and they, are very, uh, they know their jobs. So uh, it, it, it's like that. I mean, if the person didn't know their job, they wouldn't be in a position in a shipyard. Sounds like they weed them out. They what? They weed them out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I've seen youngsters go on a shipyard, you know, all full of pep and vinegar to get things done. And no, we don't do it that way, youngster. <laughs> you know, and they get disappointed. And, uh, you know, they say, oh, I'll get myself another job because. But if they gave it a chance, you know, pretty soon they would be learning again the right way in the shipyard way. You know, <laughs> right way the wrong way in the shipyard way. <laughs> Speaking, speaking of youngsters, what, what do you tell uh, a youngster, maybe a kid who's getting out of high school or maybe someone in their early 20s, if they wanted to join the military or maybe eventually the shipyard, what piece of advice would you give them? Do it. <laughs> Why is <Yeah. that? laughs> I, uh, I advocate uh, any youngster, any, any young man or young woman these days, well, even I, I do know some older women now that – that were that had a career in the navy and did very well so i'm i'm advocate that anybody that thinks of joining the military uh you know there are there are hazards joining the military mm. you might get yourself shot up you know and things of that sort but the learning process and the and the maturing process i think is superior to what you can find on the outside i think that's my opinion. Cause I, I know some people that never were in the service, and they, they, they're the superintendents, and they're, they're probably the, the business owners. You know, for instance, no, they didn't, they couldn't spend very much time in the military and own a very successful business. That that doesn't jibe, you know. But as far as living a, living a life that you know you're being directed, uh, you, you you sometimes you don't have a choice where you're going to be stationed. And uh, sometimes uh, the demands of the job are much more than what you can do for your family because you have to be at sea for a certain amount of time, you know, more time than when you're at sea. Your family is not, is not being taken care of by you, basically. <clears throat> so uh, th that's a demand that you have to deal with. And, and, you, you, and your, you and your family have to, you know, make the decision to... Well, we're going to do it this way and it, and stay together. Basically, that's that's what the big thing is. So, uh, I it's different, but it's a, it's a it's a job. It's 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 a uh, it, it's more than a job. It's a it's an it's a occupation. It's a, uh, a way of life. It's you know, and there's a lot of thought processes that go on. There's people people in the military think differently than people who are pushing themselves in the civilian world. You know, so uh, I. Uh, what can I say? I was still talking about something I did 60 years ago. <laughs> But, but do you feel like that uh, by joining the military, the Navy, that it will it'll really develop them in a good way, really develop them and just really develop their character? Yes, I do. Um, you know, first of all, military life, you're a lot more closer to your comrades, okay? Um, I can't talk to, well, I can't talk to civilian life. But, you know, in civilian life, it's more like uh, unless you develop a close relationship with a, with a fellow worker or, or somebody that's in the same uh, company that you are, uh, you're, you're, not really, you're not really pushed or, or you're not really dependent on that other person. It might be the person you have, you're sharing a desk with. It may be the 
person at the next, at the next uh, workstation. And you don't really, you don't really develop a close relationship, my opinion. You don't really develop a close relationship. But when you're in a service and you are actually relying on someone else, if you get into a tough situation as far as military is concerned, that is trying to protect your life from the enemy, uh, you're relying on that other person. And there's a bond there. There's a, there's a stronger kinship that develops that, uh, you know, you're, if that person doesn't do his job, I may be dead. You know, that kind of thing happens. So <clears throat> anyway, you develop that bond and that trust among the group that you're in in the military, I think. So, and, and you know, I, I wasn't in the Air Force. I wasn't in the Army. I was, I was in the Navy and I was aboard a nuclear submarine. So that's what I can talk to. That's the kind, kind of thing that I'm thinking, you know. Fair enough. Uh, now, Joe, we're uh, approaching the end of the interview, and so I want to I want to make this a little bit fun. Uh, this is called word association. So I'm gonna give you like one or two words. Uh, this is just more lighthearted. I'm just giving you like one or two words, just random words. Uh, just tell me uh, tell me what you think. It's just, it's a fun it's a fun thing. Um, here's an example. Uh, for example, the longtime listeners know um, I really have a dis- strong dislike for pickles. I think they're gross and disgusting pickles. pickles? Uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word pickles? Gherkins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sweet pickles. Sweet pickles. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh. How about rap music? <laughs> <laughs> you know you know that I play the the uh bass and, I do. The, and you know, in the church choir in the church band, church not band, but the praise team. Sure. And uh no, rap music does nothing for me. And a lot of times when I'm driving and people have their rap music and their big big speakers in their car next to us. And I'll crank my window down and turn up KCIS, KCMS. Oh, man. <laughs> Blow that music up. <laughs> Competing. <laughs> this is... That's the worst thing I do. But anyway, uh, no, I have no, I have no reason. I don't think rap music has any, any, I don't think it should exist personally. Okay. No worries. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. Uh, country music. Did you want one word on that? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. How about country music? Uh, grandma and pickup trucks. <laughs> grandma and pickup trucks. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, how about uh, 70s disco music? Disco? Uh, in my Navy career, <laughs> I was never a dancer. Never. In fact, when I was courting Irene, and we used to go to dances, we used to go to high school dances with her. Because she was still in high school when I was dating. And uh, we used to go to high school dances, and even there, I kind of said, <laughs> uh, I'd rather associate, but I'd rather go converse with people than, than dance. <laughs> so, no worries. Uh, steak. Steak? I'm allergic to beef. Okay. All right. <laughs> Allergies. Okay. Uh, pizza. Pizza. Uh, Gosh, pizza is good in its place, and uh, I guess that's a good one. That's it, pizza. Pizza, all right. Bad hygiene. Bad hygiene. <laughs> Let me, give me an escape route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both on that one. Uh, oh, laziness. Laziness. Well, a good, never mind. A good swift kick. No, no, that isn't it. Um, I, I, uh, I would, I like to try to, well, you're asking for one word. I like to try to motivate a person that I see as lazy. And, you know, there, there may be an excuse for the person not being, act, you know, not being, with it, let's no. say. So I always try to try to uh, consider that too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> romantic movies. Romantic movies. <laughs> my wife and my daughter like to see that she like to turn on the chick flicks on TV. Okay. I end up looking at YouTube on on my computer instead. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> that, that was my next one on social media. Social media. Spend too much. I spend too much time at it, and I I see the young folks, young folks. I see some some not so young folks 
uh, with their thumbs in the middle of their, uh, what do you call it, smartphones. Mm -hmm. And I own a smartphone. But uh, I think we're too involved in it. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole population is too involved in that's true. social media. How about horror movies? Horror movies? No, they... No. <laughs> no. I... I don't know. I, I, the genre itself and the people that are fans of horror movies, I, I always think they're they're, they're not correct. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Um, how about action movies? Action movies, I love them. You want to tell me, oh, let me tell you about all the submarine movies that I know. <laughs> I was going to say movies like Few Good Men or uh, yeah, Rambo. Yeah. Well, even, you know, some of the, some of the uh, Jesus movies, too, you know, I... I enjoy watching those. Yeah. Um, okay, how about uh, politics? Politics, bad subject. Well, it's a good subject, it's a bad subject. But you know, if you, if you, uh, I, I spend a lot of time with politics, you know, uh, observing politics. And one of the things I like to do is to get the, what, what I consider the opposite view. When I see somebody on, television, social media, YouTube, saying, you know, spouting off about, oh, this person is such a bad person, that's this and that. Then I'll go to the person they're talking about, if I can find something, and say, okay, what's their, what's their opinion? And, you know, you realize pretty soon that politics is a bunch of exaggerations of the truth, let's say. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, United States. I love it. I'm wearing a flag. I do that because I love it. Uh, you know, it's the best, as my, in my opinion, it's the best uh, country. It's a, it's the, well, it's a leader in, leader in the world. You know, it's not a third world country, that's for sure. And uh, so, and you know, and even the selection of leaders. The people that select people, the people vote and select their leader, and no matter what my opinion is of the of the leader, you, the leader has been selected by the person, by the people of the of the country. So, you know, it's a good system. It was set up, uh, you know, by religious people, by, and uh, let's say they did a good job of setting it up. That was my next one. I was thinking it was Constitution. The Constitution, Constitution is. You know, it, it, the Constitution is, how many countries have adopted, you know, not only the Constitution almost word for word, but variations of what our Constitution is. And, you know, of the 166 countries in the world, I would say the better, the better countries that are leaders in the world follow, well, let's say the majority of them follow. What what the what the uh, what we what we advocate in our what is advocated in the U.S. Constitution? <clears throat> How about uh, I got a few more. How about uh, military? Military is as I spouted out, you know, from the beginning that uh, it's good. It it uh, teaches it teaches a way of life that you know that you you can rely on the people, you know, you're the, the person that you're associated with, at least you want to ally, you want that person to be the type of person that you can uh, rely on. It teaches you uh, close living, <laughs> you know, living in barracks, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, and also aboard, aboard as, as units go out and do their job, whether it's Air Force, military, you know, Army, whatever, whatever the units are, the un you get you get to be a close association. Uh, a lot of the people that I consider as friends, that are friends, a lot of the people are military background. So you, even here in the church, you know, there's a whole bunch of retired folks here in this church, and I consider each and every one of them close friends. You know, so. Uh, not to exclude anybody that wasn't in the military. No. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 
<laughs> Anthony. <laughs> oh, hey, my uh, dad. My dad was in the Navy, so yeah. I was a I was a Navy brat. There you go. So you know what I'm talking about, then. You you yeah. were on the other end of what I'm talking about, basically. Okay. No, military is military is uh, is good uh, because first off, you know the defenders of the nation, and primarily, and secondly. The folks that are in the military are usually of good character. And thirdly, the people, well, I grew up in the military. What can I say? I said it. Hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So um, we're at the end of the interview. Uh, Joe, is there anything that you would like to tell our listeners? Any final words, anything well, you need to say? I understand your, your folks now, what your, your target listeners are, what uh, – T- uh, college, uh, no, high school. college bound. High, high school, school, yeah, high school, college. Maybe college bound, career bound. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, well, first off, listen to your counselors. Is the first thing. Uh, we didn't have counselors in my high school. Uh, you know, we talked with our teachers, but they weren't very. Well, they were not considered counselors. We were just another adult we could talk to, basically. Um, and that and that's probably important, is somebody that should talk to other adults outside of the family and and you know get some opinions that are probably not the same as your as your family's opinion and and weigh them you know and, and weigh the opinion and see well, maybe there's something there that I could use so I, I would say that become social, become with, with older people. With uh, people that have done the thing that you may want to do, as you as you're looking for something to you know, your business or your occupation or whatever, talk to people who've been there and done that. That's my advice. And you know, you may not like what they say. You may have to look for something else. Or maybe you know what you what you are thinking is a good thing. They will have a very poor opinion of it. And maybe that's a clue that you should be maybe looking for something other than to do other than what you think you know you want to do. Hey, that Sounds great. Thank you, Joe, for your time. Appreciate it. Well, that's it. That's it. Goodbye. And that concludes this edition of Conversations with Mr. A with Joe Garasso. Um, thank you, Joe, for sharing uh, your experience in the Navy, just sharing your life experiences and your perspectives. Definitely had a lot of really great things to say. Thank you for listening, everybody. More episodes to come.